My brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Church celebrates the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we celebrate the great solemnity of the Immaculate Conception on December 8th. Here, nine months later, we celebrate Mary's birth on September 8th. This is a day where the, the readings that, that we hear at Mass are very applicable, but they're somewhat opaque as to the, the unique uh, aspect of the celebration of Mary's birth. Of course, we certainly know her, her role as the, the mother of Jesus, his nativity at the Immaculate Conception. We, we reflect on her being you know, conceived of the fullness of grace without the stain of sin. And yet this day, as a feast that's characterized by light, what really is going on here? And so I'd like to, to turn to some words from today's Office of the Readings. The second reading in the office is from a discourse by St. Andrew of Crete, uh, who is a bishop. Uh, it provides a certain insight into the day. St. Andrew of Crete says, The fulfillment of the law is Christ himself, who does not so much lead us away from the letter as lift us up to its spirit. For the law's consummation was this, that the very lawgiver accomplished his work and changed letter into spirit, summing up everything in himself, and though subject to the law, living by grace. He subordinated the law, yet harmoniously united grace with it, not confusing the distinctive characteristics of the one with the other, but affecting the transition in a way most fitting for God. He changed whatever was burdensome, servile, and oppressive into what is light and liberating, so that we should be enslaved no longer under the elemental spirits of the world, as the Apostle says, nor held fast as bondservants under the letter of the law. This is the highest all-embracing benefit that Christ has bestowed on us. This is the revelation of the mystery. This is the emptying out of the divine nature, the union of God and man, and the deification of the manhood that was assumed. This radiant and manifest coming of God to men most certainly needed a joyful prelude to introduce the great gift of salvation to us. The present festival, the birth of the mother of God, is the prelude, while the final act is the foreordained union, foreordained union of the word with flesh. Today, the Virgin is born, tended, and formed, prepared for her role as Mother of God, who is the universal King of the ages. Justly, then, do we celebrate this mystery, since it signifies for us a double grace. We are led toward the truth, and we are led away from our condition of slavery to the letter of the law. How can this be? Darkness yields before the coming of light, and grace exchanges legalism for freedom. But midway between the two stands today's mystery, at the frontier where types and symbols give way to reality, and the old is replaced by the new. Therefore let all creation sing and dance and unite to make worthy contribution to the celebration of this day. Let there be one common festival for saints in heaven and men on earth. Let everything, mundane things and those above, join in festive celebration. Today this created world is raised to the dignity of a holy place for him who made all things. The creature is newly prepared to be a divine dwelling place for the Creator. My brothers and sisters, the Church normally celebrates the, the saints throughout the year according to their heavenly birthday, the day that they die, the, the day that they go on uh, to eternity. But there are three saints that we celebrate, or there are three people the Church celebrates their actual birthday in the flesh, and that is Jesus himself at Christmas, Mary as we celebrate today, and St. John the Baptist, whose nativity we celebrate on June 24th. And it's very appropriate that these three figures are celebrated in this way. Often people can fall into the error of trying to separate the Old and New Testaments, as if the New just replaces the Old. But in fact, the New Covenant of Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Covenant, of the promise. And so, John the Baptist as the precursor of Jesus and Mary as his mother stand as important hinges as where the Old Covenant stands at the threshold of the New to give, to give birth, literally, to the fulfillment of the covenant in Jesus. And we can think of this in another passage we often hear on Marian feast days. We don't today, but we often hear the image from the book of Revelation, the woman clothed with the sun who gives birth. 
Well, that image from the book of Revelation can be said to be an image of Mary and of the church herself, and it's appropriate that it stands for both, because just as Mary gives birth to the fullness of the covenant in Jesus, the church of the, or the, the Israel, God's people gives birth to the fullness of God's people in the church. In a sense, the, the narrow confines of the old covenant, uh, the, the legalism, the law, the constraints, give, uh, given birth to the universality of the church and of the covenant of God's love. And so, today is a great day of celebration. Yes, the birthday as we celebrate the birthdays of our loved ones, we celebrate with birth the Blessed Mother, uh, our Mother in Heaven, but also we recognize what an important moment this is for the transformation of all creation. O oh, Blessed Mother, Mother, or Blessed Mother of God, pray for us, and happy birthday.